Explosive Encounters Karma In May 2019, British troops in Iraq witnessed an event that both amazed and amused. It involved a drone and the ISIS terrorist group. The terrorists attach C-5 explosives on drones and set them off above coalition forces. However, things took a turn for the worse when they bought drones that were programmed to return to base in the event of low power. The drone that the ISIS member in Iraq used was to target UK troops stationed near Mosul. The rebel wired the drone with explosives, but was killed when the batteries ran low and the drone returned to base. The drone exploded above the ISIS fighter, killing him. War Collectors Collecting war weapons is a common interest shared by a significant portion of the population. Two brothers-in-law shared this interest. They had gathered more than a hundred frag grenades, bazookas, fuse materials, and ammunition from Lapland's forests by the time of their deaths. The men had no experience handling or disposing of explosives, but they enjoyed gathering the weapons as trophies. It's obvious how this will all turn out. On September 13th, 2013 in Finland, the two men in a small garage with their collection of antique weapons. After defusing a grenade, the older man was carefully removing the payload. His focus was on a large 75 millimeter anti-tank grenade that measured 17 inches in length. The attempt to render it harmless ironically had the opposite effect. A tiny explosion rocked the quiet of the garage in the northern town of Kemi. The other man survived with serious injuries, while the man with the grenade died in the ambulance. Following the explosion, 200 people were evacuated to a school within a 150-meter radius of the garage. The police department then safely removed dozens of explosives. Faster is not better. The deadliest solution isn't always the fastest one. The story of a 39-year-old professional welder highlights the dangers of skipping high school chemistry in favor of a time-saving invention. On September 3, 2018, in New Zealand, a man worked with a friend to weld an exhaust pipe onto a vintage sedan in his final moments. He carried an experimental welding kit with him when he got to the garage shed. It was an LPG bottle that looked like a propane tank, and inside it, he had combined the two ingredients needed to make oxyacetylene welding gas, acetylene and oxygen. Expert welders are aware that these ingredients are stored in different tanks for a reason. A mixed acetylene oxygen tank without a flow regulator is a disaster waiting to happen. Unknowingly, the man had created a deadly explosive. His friend saw this risky mix as soon as he unveiled his homemade contraption and kept telling him it was crazy. The man ran out of the shed quickly, but the welder, not to be deterred, lit the welding tip and affixed a torch head directly to the bottle. Without a regulator, the flame returned to the bottle, causing the shed to explode and flatten, along with the approximately 20 liters of paint thinner and gasoline inside. The explosion's force was so great that it broke the windows of nearby buildings. Deadly Fire Extinguisher a man in Russia in 2017 was a highway maintenance and repair worker for a construction company when he observed that a fire extinguisher was a perfect fit for an abandoned artillery howitzer. Motivated, he jammed the fire extinguisher all the way down the barrel. Those who receive training to operate hot plasma welders are typically not risk takers. He was, however, determined to disprove the cliché that there are bold and old welders, but no old bold welders. He loaded the cannon with water and calcium carbide, which reacts to produce acetylene welding gas. Unfortunately for him, his head was in the way of the shrapnel when the fire extinguisher exploded from the howitzer cannon, braining him with pieces of the payload. Suffice it to say he died. Deadly find. On a Saturday in March, a 50-year-old Romanian man was admitted to the hospital after bringing home a projectile he discovered outside his village. He started hitting it with a hammer. The result was explosive and he died. TNT. 
On May 8, 2009, just three miles from a booster rocket testing area in Utah, Brent discovered a cache of dynamite on his 5,000-acre ranch. Brent, 59, discovered a cache of dynamite in a shed. Not much is known about this stash. It was never determined if the dynamite was Brent's or someone else's. Regardless of its source, the rancher was concerned, and rightfully so. Nitroglycerin, which is sweated by old dynamite, is extremely unstable and prone to popping at any time. The rancher was undoubtedly aware of this well-known fact, but he thought he could handle this stash of flash. The rancher took the dynamite out of the shed, set it in a field of knee-high grass, took a shotgun, and fired it from about 40 yards away. The rancher received a good blow to the head from the shrapnel that the dynamite threw back at him. According to the sheriff's office, the dynamite exploded. The man passed away as a result. Lighter gas. Workers in a medium-sized West Texas warehouse detected a gas leak's odor. Astutely, the building's management evacuated and turned off all lights, power, and other potential sources of ignition. Following the building's evacuation, two gas company technicians were sent out. They had trouble finding their way around in the dark once they were inside the building. They were frustrated that not a single light worked. Subsequently, witnesses reported seeing one of the technicians take something that looked like a cigarette lighter out of his pocket. The gas in the warehouse exploded when the lighter-like object was operated, sending pieces of it up to three miles away. The technicians were nowhere to be discovered, but the lighter was essentially unharmed by the blast. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more content like this.